Welcome to this demonstration of Pivotal Container Service 1.3, introducing support for Microsoft Azure. I'm Dan Basket, Technical Marketing at Pivotal Software. We'll start with a configured environment. I have a Bosch Director for Microsoft Azure and a Pivotal Container Service tile installed. I've configured the tile with multiple plans, a small plan and a medium plan with eight nodes. If we look at the Microsoft Azure UI, we can see the virtual machines that make up this configuration. I have our Operations Manager VM, a Bosch VM, and a Pivotal Container Service VM. Now we can start using PKS. Take a look at the command line options, and then if we have any existing clusters. And next we'll create a cluster, give it an external host name, and the size cluster we want to build. Now that we have that kicked off, we can watch for its completion. And then we'll jump back into the Microsoft Azure UI and watch the progress. We see that Bosch has created the virtual machines needed for the Kubernetes cluster. And now the cluster is finished creating. Our next step is to configure the load balancer so we have access to the Kubernetes API host. So within the Microsoft Azure UI, we want to point our load balancer toward our three master nodes. We'll create a health probe so that it knows when to fail over. And then some rules of the port that we want forward across that load balancer. Now if we issue a PKS get credentials, we'll get the credentials to be able to log in with kubectl to our cluster. We can also start up the proxy so that we can access the dashboard. See that we have a cluster created with eight worker nodes. But no pods, so we need to fix that. For this example, we're going to install Pivotal Greenplum for Kubernetes using the operator provided. So first we'll install and configure Helm, and that'll let us install the operator. Once it reports is running, we'll look into the Kubernetes UI just to verify. And there it is. So now we can use the operator to install our Greenplum cluster. So I'll pass it a configuration and wait for it to install. Our cluster is up and running, so we can give an initialize database command, and that'll bring the database up. And then we can use PSQL to test connectivity. And it's up. Another new feature of PKS 1.3 is the ability to shrink clusters. So we'll resize our Greenplum cluster from eight nodes down to six. If we look in the Microsoft Azure UI, we can watch the nodes be deleted. In the background, PKS is busy moving workloads from one node to another so it can safely remove nodes from the cluster. For example, it moved one of my segment hosts to another node. So now if we look at our node count, we're down to six nodes. And all our pods are operational across those six nodes. Greenplum is a very resilient data warehousing application. In this case, we have redundant data segments that are all mirrored across multiple hosts. So when we removed hosts from the cluster, we began to use the backup data segments. Greenplum continued to run during this operation, but now we want to fail back to our primary data segments so that our mirroring will continue to operate. So we'll issue the commands to fail back to our primaries and let those resynchronize. Now we're fully resynchronized and back to our original state. And we've shrunk nodes from our cluster. So you see it's down to six nodes.